Dear Abby, We've never met before, so this may seem a bit odd, but I feel this is necessary. My name's Jay, for starters. I work the checkout line at the grocery store up on 67th Street. You know, the one with the parking lot that's way too big for the store itself. Yeah, that one. I'm 34, fairly tall. I have a rather scraggly appearance. You probably wouldn't recognize me if I came up to talk to you. I don't have a very memorable face. I don't really know why I'm telling you all of this, to be honest. But this isn't the point of me writing you. I was working late at night yesterday. It was a very average day for the most part. Nothing too exciting happened. But you'd be surprised how interesting this job can get at times. I'd been reading some book the guy that worked the counter the shift before me had left. It was some really crappy murder mystery, chock full of cliches. Incredibly boring, if you ask me. But it's something to do, I guess. When you showed up, though, the whole night changed. I don't know exactly what it was about you that caught my attention at first. As soon as I saw you, I got this odd feeling. A weird mix between excitement and terror. That's the best way I can describe it, at least. I saw you walk into my line, and I quickly composed myself. I'd been slouching down in my chair for a while since I rarely ever get anyone in my line. And then you got closer and I realized what about you had caught my eye. You are absolutely beautiful. You walked up and you said, hey, and handed me your cart. I could tell by the way you were talking and the way you looked that you were very sleep deprived. Though this wasn't surprising considering how late it was. After a second or two of awkward silence, I realized that you'd greeted me, and I suddenly forced out a ha-hi in response. I cursed myself out mentally for that one. I sat there for a second trying to focus. What's your name? I said. It's only later I realized how odd this must have seemed. What kind of a grocery bag guy asks for someone's name? I'm glad I did, though. I remember you said your name was Abigail but that you go by Abby for short. It seems to fit so perfectly. The name just seems to roll off my tongue as I say it back to myself quietly. It was like sweet honey. It just felt good as I said it. You seemed to be perplexed when I looked back at you, and I wondered if I'd done something to upset you. Shouldn't you be packing those? You said and pointed to your groceries. Suddenly shocked and embarrassed, I looked up and apologized then clumsily started shoving groceries into bags as fast as I could. I couldn't believe myself. How stupid could I be? But when I looked up, I realized you were laughing. You're kind of cute, you said. I tried to play it off cool, but I was obviously thrilled. A girl like this thought I was cute. You are too, I said, as I hastily packed the rest of the groceries. As you walked out, you turned around as you reached the door and said, have a good night. I'm guessing I look pretty stupid writing all this down. You probably still remember it. I mean, it did just happen yesterday, but I went home ecstatic with all the confidence in the world. I feel like it's almost unreal writing it back here. Anyway, I wanted to write you this letter, Abby, to tell you that I love you. I don't know what it was that I felt that night. It was some weird mix-up of emotions, but... All I know was that even in that small little transaction we had, I felt as if there was something between us. Please write me back soon. Sincerely, Jay. Dear Abby, It's been a week since I sent my last letter and I still haven't gotten a response. But that doesn't matter. How have you been? My life's been just as normal as usual. Get up, go to work, go to bed. I live in a really shitty apartment, but I guess that's what you get when you work as a grocery bagger. I've thought about you a lot lately. I sometimes wonder if you still remember me. I saw you again today at work. This time it was at a more reasonable hour, thankfully. I didn't want to bother you. I wanted to see if you'd approach me on your own. You came to my line again, which made me absolutely thrilled. This time I was less nervous. I was going to act normal no matter what you did or said. I wasn't going to let a girl like you slip through my fingers. As you walked up, you muttered something that was too quiet for me to make out and waited at the end of the counter for me to finish packing your groceries. 
This obviously wasn't what I expected, but it wasn't all too bad. You didn't seem to feel anything at all. Actually, I was expecting you to either come up and talk to me or avoid me like the plague, but instead you just walked on through as if I was another stranger. This makes me wonder if you got my last letter. You should check your mailbox more often. There was one moment where I felt something though. I looked over briefly to see what you were doing and at the same time you seemed to look up at me to see how far along I was. Right then our eyes locked, only for a second or two. But in those two seconds I saw so much more in you than I had seen the last time. I felt as if I'd known you for years, like I knew all your intricate feelings and emotions. Did you feel anything like that with me? Shortly after I'd finished packing your bags, you paid and walked out. Obviously, this was a pretty normal process for me, considering I do it about 50 times every day. But I'd been determined since the night I wrote you that the next time I saw you, I was going to get more out of it. I kind of screwed that one up. I wasn't satisfied with it. I had to have more. There's a little room in the very back left corner of the grocery store designated for staff. In there, though, I knew they kept all the security footage from the day. All staff are informed of this and the security cameras locations when they're hired. Luckily for me, there's one positioned right next to my counter. I waited until the store closed up and everybody left, and then I went in. After flipping through a few of the TV screens, I found the one that was connected to the camera by my counter. I rewound it until right about when I remember you coming in. After a few minutes of scanning, I found it. There you were. I paused on the best still shot I could find. I knew the camera wouldn't do you justice, but it was the best I could have for now. Having a longer look at you, I realized how truly perfect you are. Every feature of your body, your hair, your face, your legs, your chest, just perfection. I rewinded the tape a little bit more to when you first came up to my line. I couldn't help myself. My eyes were glued to the screen. After a few minutes of consideration, I popped out the tape and shoved it in my pocket. Then I drove home. I knew I wasn't allowed to. I could very well be fired for taking such an action, but I couldn't help myself. I had to have you with me at all times, even if it means losing my job. Abby, I love you. I love everything about you. I think about you constantly now. Do you feel the same way about me, Abby? I just want us to be together. Forever. Right back soon, okay? Yours truly, Jay. Dear Abby, It's been three days and I still haven't gotten a reply. Why don't you want to talk to me? I'm still unsure if you got my last two letters. Please let me know if you have. So, I got fired from my job. They found the missing tape. I got a call from the store owner at 6 a.m. on Monday and was told to come in immediately. They were having a mandatory staff meeting. And when I got there, all the staff was gathered around a small table with the owner at the head of it. Once everyone had arrived, he told us that apparently there had been a minor robbery yesterday. They had about $200 worth of stuff taken from them. The one tape that would have shown who was the culprit was the one I had taken. Just my luck. He told us that no one was going to leave the room until someone confessed. After a few minutes, I finally gave in. I told him everything about how I felt as if me and you had this connection. After explaining the whole story, the entire room was staring wide-eyed at me. And I sat there in silence for a few seconds. The store owner broke the tension and said, Jay, you're fired. Get out of here now and don't come back. I did as I was told and got out of there as fast as I could. That stupid prick. He always treated me like shit. He's been on my case since the day I got the job. I swear he's just been waiting for me to do one little thing that could justify firing me. And the one time I slip up and he finds out. Why didn't he understand though? Doesn't he get that you and I are meant for each other? Any rational man would have understood. Anyone put in my situation would have done that, right? I've been searching you up a lot lately. With no job, I have all the time in the world to spend learning about you. Do you know how much you can find out about someone with just a first name and the town of residence? 
I found out your last name is Murat. What a beautiful name. Abby Murat. I can't help but say it aloud whenever I think about you. I also found out you're 24 and you only live a mile away from me. I drove down to your apartment complex today. It looks really nice, much nicer than where I live. I asked to see you multiple times, but I was told you weren't there every time. I feel more and more discouraged, but I'm determined to see you again. After a few hours of asking, I decided to stay back in the parking lot for a while and wait for you to come back. And after many hours of waiting, you did. It was late at night, around 10 I believe. I saw you pull up in your car and get out. I felt this sudden rush of warmth at seeing your face again. I know I have the security camera tape to look at, but it doesn't compare to seeing you in real life. I made sure to record it for later when I was at home, this time with a much higher quality camera. I wanted to capture as much detail as possible. I don't know when the next time I'll see you will be. The security tape isn't enough for me anymore. I asked the woman at the front desk multiple times what your apartment number is, and she refused to tell me. She thought I was some sort of creep, Abby. These people don't understand. I ended up waiting in the parking lot a little longer until someone came out. After talking to him for a little bit, he told me what your apartment number was. He didn't want to talk at first, but I made him. You'd be surprised what you can make people tell you when you're holding a knife to their chest. Don't worry, I didn't hurt him too bad, but I can't have someone interfering with us. Don't you agree, Abby? I'm sick of people trying to keep us apart. I ended up watching you from the parking lot for a while, once I knew what your apartment number was. You should be more careful about shutting your blinds, you know? I was easily able to watch you from where I was. I can't get you out of my head anymore, ever. All I do is watch that video I took of you over and over, Abby. I want to be with you. I want to wake up in the morning and see you next to me in bed. I can't wait until the next time I see you again. Love, Jay. Dear Abby, I have some really exciting news, Abby. I'm moving in with you. Aren't you excited? We can spend hours and hours and hours together. It'll be just perfect. Okay, so let me explain. My job paid just enough so I could make rent and pay for food every week. Because of this, I had little to no money in savings. Nowhere near enough to last a very long time. When you take that money flow away, it doesn't take very much time until you have nothing left. I was able to get by for a few days, but just today, I got evicted. This could actually be better than I'd originally thought. I wouldn't be surprised if that guy that gave me your apartment number didn't get in contact with the police. This way they won't be able to find me, and we get to spend all the time in the world together. It's perfect. I made sure to bring all my tapes and photos I've taken with me too. And my cameras, of course. You really should tell whoever's managing your apartment complex to get better staff. I was able to get by security easily. I went up to your apartment and knocked on the door. I didn't get an answer, so I decided to get in by other means. I scanned over the footage I took from last night several times. I noticed you have a ventilation shaft in the corner of your room. Not surprising considering how hot it can get in the summer here. I figured there had to be some kind of maintenance hatch that I could get in there through. After a few minutes of looking around, I found a door at the end of your hall. Seems to be some kind of staff room. Luckily, there was a way into the vents there. I crawled through them until I got to your room. It was very cramped and hard to move around in, but I managed. When I got there, I felt a rush of success. I figured since the lights were out and I couldn't see you, that you weren't home. But I'm patient. I scanned every part of your room, trying to memorize all the intricate details. Your scent overwhelmed me as I sat there. I had caught it briefly during the two times I saw you at the store, but never this strong. It was mesmerizing. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but it reminded me of something. It was almost like peaches. I sat there hunched over for a few hours. Though I've taught myself to be extremely patient, I can sit completely motionless for hours at a time, not moving a muscle. No one was going to notice me. Then you finally got home. I felt a wide smile form on my face the second I heard the door open. There you were, my love. 
Of course, you took no notice of my presence. The light in your room seemed to be angled perfectly so you couldn't see anything in the vent after the first few inches. I tried to contain my excitement, but I started breathing really heavily. I tried to cover it up as best I can, but it's so hard. You looked right at the vent. I went completely silent. After a few seconds, though, you seemed to lose interest. This made me smile. This was the perfect spot. I could tell I had startled you, though. All throughout the night, you were turning over in your sleep to look at the vent. People seem to have a sense for when they're being watched. It can send them into complete panic. Don't try to fake it, Abby. I can tell when someone's awake. When someone's truly scared, sleep becomes impossible. Why are you so scared anyways? It's just me. Why would I scare you? You do love me, right? You know I love you. I'm looking forward to spending every day with you now, Abby. Right back if you can. Love, Jay. Dear Abby, I saw you wake up this morning. I didn't sleep a wink last night. You were too enthralling. I spent the whole night watching you. I just couldn't help it. Anytime I tried to look away, my eyes seemed to be drawn back a few seconds later. You look even more amazing when you're sleeping, you know? You'd be surprised how much you can learn about a person's personality by watching them sleep. I was tempted to get out of the vent to get a better view of you multiple times in the night but I resisted that urge. I couldn't have you figuring out I'm here. Not yet, at least. You seem to spend a lot of time in your bathroom in the morning. I assumed you were taking a shower, putting on makeup. Why would you do that, Abby? Anything you could do to change the way you naturally look would only cover up your true beauty. Why would you want to do that? Don't you want the whole world to see what I see in you? You left shortly after to work. Or at least that's what I assume. After careful consideration, I decided to leave the vent. I slid my hand through one of the slits and felt around for one of the bolts. The surface of the vent is very smooth, which makes them easy to find. I grabbed onto one and twisted as hard as I could, and I was finally able to pop it off. I did this with all the other bolts as well, and removed the grating. The first thing I did was go over to the bathroom. I quickly disposed of everything I could find that you could use to mask your face. That stuff disgusts me. This way everyone will get to see how you truly are. I also found something else in there. Your hairbrush. I grabbed it and brought it close to my face to examine it. It's a dull blue. Very thick rounded handle. That wasn't what interested me. The hairs. That's what made me so interested. I took a good few minutes to pull every one of them I could see out, line them up on your counter. I counted them. I'd gotten 59. This pleases me greatly. I scooped them up and I put them in my pocket. I spent the rest of the day going through your stuff to learn more about you, your interests and things like that. I take it you're a big movie fan, Abby. I found your collection in the back of your closet. I have to say it's quite impressive. I found something else in there that made me mad. A picture of you with another man. Disgusted me just looking at him, holding you like he owned you. I'm the only one that's going to have you now, Abby. No one else. So at about 8.30, I considered starting to get back into the vent. Since that's usually when you get back from work. And then I had another idea. I looked at your bed. The blankets hung low enough to the floor that you couldn't see underneath the bed unless they were lifted up. I first screwed the vent grating back on, and I slowly slid under your bed with a big smile on my face and waited for you to get home. When you finally did come home, you looked completely pale, and I noticed someone else came in behind you. They were talking to you about hearing noises coming from your room throughout the day, and I mentally yelled at myself, I would need to be more careful from now on. Going under the bed had been a good idea though since obviously your first thought was to check the vent. You thanked the person and they left. Finally, you and I were alone again. I sat there in silence until you went to bed. It seemed to be an eternity before you did. I wanted to get a closer look at you tonight, and this was my chance. You got in bed and turned off the lights. I was cautious, though. I waited for hours to make sure you were asleep. And when I was sure you were, I slowly slid out from under the bed. 
and I saw you there. You looked absolutely stunning. Every curve of your body was perfect. Every little detail is beautiful. I was in awe just looking at you. I reached out my hand and I started to stroke your face. It was soft like silk. Your beauty was overwhelming. I tried to control myself out of worry of waking you up, but I just couldn't help it. I felt pure ecstasy. Everything about you was perfect. Suddenly, you seemed to turn and started to wake up. I was horrified and I quickly slid back under the bed trying to be as quiet as possible. A few seconds and I saw you get out of bed and look around. I could sense your fear even without looking at you. You should feel calm with me around you, Abby. I'll protect you. No one will ever touch you but me. I'd kill someone for you, Abby. I made sure to pay attention today. You didn't bring in my letter from yesterday or any mail at all. You must not check your mailbox. I'm going to change that, though. I'm going to leave this one on your desk tomorrow. Oh, I forgot to mention. I'm making something special for you. Check in your closet after you read this. Yours forever, J. Dear Abby, I spent more time today working on the surprise while you were at work. You're really going to love it, Abby. I've put a lot of work into it, you know. I spent a few hours today putting the finishing touches on it, and I think it's finally ready for you to see. You got home at about 8.30 again and saw the letter laying on your desk almost immediately. I started to smile as I saw you open it, waiting to see your reaction. It was really quite interesting watching your face. I could see all your different emotions and thoughts. You seemed to be confused at first and then shocked and then horrified. You started to shake violently and I saw that you were starting to cry. Do you not like me, Abby? Why were you crying? Don't you love me, Abby? Everything after that was a blur. You looked over to the closet while still sobbing. You seemed to be contemplating whether to open it or not. Instead, you ran past it and out the door. When you came back, you had all my letters in your hand and started going through them. At some point, you seemed to break down and curl up on the floor, tears still rolling down your face. I could tell you were desperately trying to say something, anything, but you were too paralyzed in fear. After about 10 minutes, I saw you look under the bed, in the vent, anywhere I could be. But you see, though, Abby, I'm smarter than that. I knew you'd look in those places. I found a better place after I finished your surprise. You'll never find me here. No one will. I can watch you forever and ever, and there's nothing you or anyone else can do about it. You hadn't found your surprise yet, though, Abby, and I could tell you were still thinking about it. I saw you look over to your closet. I knew you wanted to open it, but at the same time you were nervous. What was it going to be? What would you find? This couldn't last forever though. You and I both knew that. I watched you slowly walk over to your closet, fumbling with the handle trying to get a firm grasp on it. And then you flung open the door and saw it. It was a scrapbook of me and you. I saw you flipping through the pages. You seem so shocked. Do you not like it, Abby? I got pictures of you and I when you weren't looking. Pictures of you sleeping. Pictures of you at your computer. I'd scattered the hairs I'd collected throughout it, along with pictures of couples together. Of course, with our faces on them. I got that picture of you with the other guy, and I put it at the very back. Except I didn't leave it like it normally was. I scratched that little prick's face off. I hate him so much. If I knew who he was, I'd hunt him down, make him suffer. Do you get it, Abby? No one. No one can have you but me. Me and you are meant for each other. I watched you sob for another 30 minutes, and then get up and run out of your apartment. Shortly after, you came back with multiple policemen. I was kind of shocked. Did you not like the surprise, Abby? Why would you bring those people into our room? They'll never find where I am, but if they did, it could ruin everything. All my work for the last few weeks would be for nothing. You wouldn't want that, right, Abby? I'm exhausted from today's work, and as much as I love you, I need sleep, Abby. Have a good night. I love you.
Love, J. Dear Abby, Do you see what you've done? Do you see what you've done? I woke up at 8 a.m. to see you frantically packing your bags. I was confused at first, but then I understood. You were leaving me. You don't love me. You don't love me. How could you do this to me, Abby? You were the only thing I wanted in life. I had nothing else to live for. When I first met you, I saw a glimmer of hope. I thought that I'd finally have a reason to wake up in the morning and go on with my shitty life. And you went and threw it away. I don't understand how you could do this to me, Abby. A few seconds after you left your room, I got out of my hiding spot and I followed behind you. I saw you throw your bags in the back and then get in your car and start it. I wasn't going to let you go away though, Abby. I would never let that happen. I ran as fast as I could to your car and smashed out the window and dragged you out. I had to hit you over the head and knock you out. You were making too much noise. Someone else, someone that doesn't understand, could have seen and ruined everything. Well, I had a plan for if you reacted like this. I drove out to the storage unit at the edge of town. I reserved a slot the day I decided to move in with you. I drove up and unlocked it. I grabbed you and carried you inside it with me. It had only been a few minutes since you were still unconscious. I made sure to check through your pockets to make sure you didn't have your phone with you. Sat you down at the very back of the small room. And then I got in and lowered the door. I called the owner of the storage unit. Told him that I'd visited my lot the other day and forgotten to lock it. I asked him if he wouldn't mind locking it for me. Of course he said yes. And I hung up. I then threw the phone on the ground and stomped on it to make sure it would never work again. Shortly after... I heard the owner come. He locked the door. About an hour later, I saw you start to get up. I heard a little faint grunt come from you, and then I saw your legs start to move. Shortly after, you were fully awake. When you saw my face, you started to scream, which then subsided to a whine and then a whimper. That's when you saw it. The one other thing in the room. My knife. It was obvious why it was there. And after a second or two of realization, you jumped and you grabbed it. I looked you dead in the eye and I said, Abby, I love you. And then I felt the searing pain of the knife being driven into my side. I felt it being pulled out and jabbed back in with great force. I could feel it go in each time, like a fire burning a hole in my chest. I fell to the floor, laughing while coughing up blood. I saw you back away, trembling, and sitting back down in the corner. And now, as I sit here in a puddle of my own blood, I wonder how you'll go out. Will you use the knife to take your own life, or will you let starvation take you? Either way, we'll be together in death, Abby. Together from the day I saw you till the day we both died, just as I wanted it. And as you sit there, crying, I can tell you've come to this realization. Abby, this is all I ever wanted. And for that, I have to say thank you.